Hey FTD fam, I think this one is gonna be a really interesting, deep video. A lot of people are talking about it, so I'm really excited to check it out with you guys. So I wanna know what it, following the Islamic faith has done for your life personally. How, how has it helped you put yourself together? And also, I'm interested in, again, why you found the Islamic tradition preferable, let's say, to the Orthodox tradition that you did you did enjoy the rituals that were part of that, at least. Oh. So let's deal with practical issues first. So, you, well, you just... I, yeah. Um, in terms of of uh, of why I chose Islam, I mean, I'm not completely convinced that I chose Islam. I mean, in some ways, Islam chose me as well. Um, so it's you know, guidance is a very strange thing for people. Like I saw an inevitability. When I look back on what happened, I saw an inevitability uh, of, of my uh, embracing Islam. I had some very interesting experiences that um, could be termed in mystical or however uh, you want to determine them. But uh, the, the tradition itself, what, what struck me was one, I got to keep all of the prophets that I, I believed in already. And I added in addition, uh, what we consider to be the, the final prophet. And just as very often Christians marvel at how Jews miss Jesus, mm. uh, Muslims also marvel at how Christians miss and Jews Muhammad. miss Muhammad. Although, to be fair to the Jews, they do acknowledge the prophet uh, as a providential force. And, and they do acknowledge him as a, a Noahidic messenger preparing the way for the the coming of the Messiah. So they do recognize that he was a providential force, at least the great, um, if you read George Kohler's book on Jewish theology as a chapter on Judaism and Islam, and certainly the great um, father of Orientalism, uh, Ignaz Golzeher, he actually said that he felt that Islam was the only religion that somebody of a philosophical bent could actually accept. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to, oh. to, to really bring in the gift of philosophy into Judaism that had been, uh, that the Muslims uh, had uh, so richly participated in. In fact, you know, there's an argument that just as Judaism prepared the way uh, for Christianity, it was Islam that prepared the way for uh, for a philosophical Western Christendom, because if you look at the transmission of all of that knowledge that comes into Europe, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, St. Thomas Aquinas, who's 13th century, he dies in 1274, and yet he's the doctor of the church. Just look at the number of times he quotes Muslims. I mean, he calls Averroes the commentator. So I think uh, Islam and, you know, one of the beauties of the religion to me is that you'll find whatever you're looking for in it. I mean, Islam, you, you, it has a, a very simple theology that anybody can understand in Surah Al-Ikhlas, the, the chapter that says, say God is, is unique, uh, God is completely independent, God neither gives birth nor was God born, and there's nothing like God. Okay. So it, it gives you a very simple uh, theology that anybody can understand. And yet embedded in that simplicity is an extraordinary complexity that actually created a metaphysical tradition that Western scholars have spent their lifetime studying. People like Henri Corbin or, or somebody, it's, it's like uh, Maxine Rodinson, uh, not Maxine Rodinson, but uh, uh, the great uh, Catholic uh, theologian and, and uh, metaphysician, Jacques Maritain, you know, recognize the genius of people like Al-Hallaj and things. So within the Islamic tradition, there's just an extraordinary spectrum. You can spend your entire life and have a satisfying life. And I know people that have done this, just mastering the recensions of the Quran and the Qira'at, the, the actual uh, uh, oral uh, expression of the Quran through the, the rules of Tajweed. Um, you, you can spend your life studying exegesis. You can spend your life studying prophetic tradition. You can spend your life studying the great mystics of Islam. We have the best poets in the world. We also have the best architecture. I mean, there's nothing like the Taj Mahal or the Alhambra Palace. And even Western architecture, if you read uh, Stealing from the Saracens, she shows how some of the finest Western architecture Her was inspired. basically taken from the Islamic civilization, right. including Notre Dame. In, in Paris. 
So you can find incredible. I know people that just uh, came to Islam through music. I mean, I know some really uh, professional musicians that fell in love with Arabic music, which led them into uh, Muslim culture. Uh, people that um, love just, I mean, one of the most interesting things about Islam is it is a truly universal religion in that you can go from Indonesia to California and find all of these different expressions of the same central truths of Islam with their own local colorings. So the West African Muslims are not like the Middle Eastern Muslims. The Middle Eastern Muslims are not like the Indian Muslims. And you have people like, uh, you know, one of the great um, impressionist painters of, uh, of uh, Sweden. I think he's actually a, considered a national treasure in, in Sweden, but uh, his, his paintings hang in the museum there. He became Muslim uh, in, in jail in, uh, oh, in, sure. um, what about happened there for, for actually to make that change he, in he him. shot a, a matador because he was raised by his father was a veterinarian and he shot a matador um, because he was so horrified that they were bringing bullfighting into France. And there was such an uproar that they actually released him. Hmm. Uh, but wow. when he was in jail, he befriended an Algerian who uh, used to recite Quran all the time. And he ended up becoming Muslim and, uh, and then studying in Egypt and then going back to, uh, to his uh, native land. He died in Spain, uh, but extraordinary individual. So you have people like that. You have people that anybody can find what they're looking for. And, and that is the power of the faith, I think, is that it is truly a universal faith. And I think one of the things that Western people tend to do, one, they don't recognize that it's a Western faith because it is. It's part of the Abrahamic faith. Uh, it, it was in Spain for centuries. It's been in Eastern Europe for centuries. Um, and even Istanbul, which is the great capital of Islam for centuries, is half in Europe and half in, 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 in the East. And that's why it really bridges these two worlds. And so there's so much. I mean, well, why did part all of the reason why I think it makes sense for religious people, Christians, Jews, and Islamic alike to focus on their commonalities in the face of the things that are disintegrating our cultures. We could start by trying to make some peace between us if we're going to consort ourselves reasonably as religious individuals. Right. And I commend you for trying to, to do some bridge building because, uh, you know, arguably um, there, there's been so much negativity around this faith yeah. and around its adherence that there's an almost instantaneous um, association with the most negative aspects of humanity with the religion. Hmm. And, and it's, it's quite tragic. And so just as an exercise, a kind of bracketing for a second and try to, try to think about things, uh, a, a mentor of mine and a friend of mine, Dr. Thomas Cleary wrote a book called Zen Koans. He also translated the Quran. He's one of the brilliant translators of, the, of, uh, of our lifetime. But he wrote a book called Zen Koans. And in the introduction of that book, he actually says that the purpose of a koan is to snap people out of, of, of sloppy thinking. I think I read thinking. that book, yeah. But he says in there, but you don't need a koan to do that. Just ask an educated Western person what they think about Islam. And they'll start expressing all of these prejudices. Yeah, the negative you aspects. Them, Have you ever read the Quran? No. <laughs> do you know anything about the Prophet Muhammad? No. no. Uh, other than maybe something they read in a... Uh, a newspaper article or in Time or Newsweek or the Atlantic Monthly, something yeah, like well, that. Yeah, well, it's not it's not an easy thing to try to get a toehold in a different tradition, especially it's when not you that don't hard. even have a toehold in your own. Yeah, I, I, it's not that hard, especially for an educated person. You're, you're obviously a highly educated person. It's not that hard. Islam, one of the things Gibbon said is that Islam spread because it's it was a very easy religion to understand. So this idea that I can't understand it, I can't, I'm having a hard time. It's not that hard to understand. I think a lot of the culture. I mean, Islam is actually a very filters out what Islam is about. Okay, I think yeah, that's what Jordan Peterson is a, speaking give about. Give me a five-minute summary of the core beliefs. I, I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I, it's not a question. No, no, no that's it's not. That's not hard at all. The, so, the, so lay lay it out. That would be very so, helpful. So, so we have a famous hadith in which. 
uh, we're, we're told that the, the angel Gabriel came in the form of a man and asked the prophet, tell me about faith. And, and the prophet Muhammad said, faith is to believe that there's only one God and that Muhammad, which includes all the previous messengers, is a messenger of God to believe in angels, to believe in the books that God has revealed, to believe in the last day, the day of judgment, and to believe in the uh, measuring out of good and evil, that good and evil is part of life. And then he said, tell me about Islam. And he said, Islam is that you uh, make the testimony of faith, that you pray five times a day, that you fast Ramadan, that you pay zakat, uh, the 2.5% of your standing wealth at the end, not your income tax, but your standing wealth at the end of a year, that's a whole year, 2.140th is given to poor people. There's eight categories that are given in the Quran. And that you, if you're able to, you make a pilgrimage once in your lifetime to Mecca. And then he said, tell me about Ihsan, uh, which is the third dimension of Islam. And he said, and this is the dimension of virtuous being, like being a person of arity, of excellence mm. in the world. And he said, Ihsan is to worship God as if you see God. And if you, and if you don't see him, at least you know that he sees you. So you have an awareness uh, of that, 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 you're, that there is a, a divine presence and you should be in a state of awareness in your behavior. I mean, one of the things about, you know, if you're driving and everybody's speeding and then somebody sees a cop, they all suddenly slow, slow down. down. Yeah. You know, I have a friend once who <laughs> just zoomed past the cop when everybody slowed down and he pulled him over. And he said, why didn't you slow down? He said, I felt like a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy gave, he let him go. But, you know, that's people when they're in the presence of authority, they tend to behave well. Unless they're an utter rebel. I mean, there are those people. I'm trying to figure out how to be a Jew and a Christian and a Muslim at the same time. But become Muslim. That's the best way. Because the beauty of Islam is you get the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Last Testament. I mean, that really is, for me, even the Jews acknowledge this. Because Islam, in many ways, is a universalized Judaism. It's Judaism for the Gentiles. Uh, we, we have the mikvah, you know, they do ghusl, we have ghusl, I mean, you know, which is the ritual. Washing uh, yourself. The, the baptism, a total immersion in water mm. ritually to, to purify yourself, which is done at least once a week. All right, guys, two great minds, you know, having a discussion like this doesn't get any better than that. I really like uh, Hamza Yusuf's uh, explanation and how he expanded on what Islam means to him and here are some of the evidences as to why he chose Islam and just also how he quickly summarized hey, the basic core beliefs. Now, Jordan Peterson, I've seen a lot of his videos and he, he says things and asks questions to really bring about a conversation and discussions. And I know sometimes people are like, oh, you know, Jordan Peterson, he's like this close to accepting Islam or whatever. And, you know, th th there's all these ideas about him. But I view Jordan Peterson as somebody who generally wants to build bridges within the religions, not only understand things for himself, but also just, hey, build bridges. And people generally want to do that because people t are actually tired of the, the 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 fighting between the the religions and someone's trying to prove their religion wrong and you know the other person's trying to prove their religion wrong and then we get like these ideas of religions and we start making fun of them and mocking people who follow them and treating them disrespectfully and you don't even know where they're coming from or understand why they're believing what they're believing and it's even worse when like, hey, you know what it's like to feel oppression and criticism. And then at the same time, you go back and do it to somebody else all because of their religion. Yeah, people are tired of that. And uh, Jordan Peterson, his work, I think really speaks to the, the opposite of that. Hey, let's have open forums where we can discuss and have people understand religion, like hear from people who are heavily involved in these religions personally and have them share and see, hey, what what can be learned out of this? Where are the commonalities and where can we go from here? Because 
Like it or not, people have different religious beliefs and different backgrounds. Are we ever gonna get to a point where everybody believes the exact same thing in the exact same way? Maybe, but definitely not in our lifetime. Uh -uh. We have over seven billion people, I think almost eight billion now on this planet. No, no, not even in our lifetime. I don't see it anyways. But hey, where do we go from there? And yeah, if that leads Jordan Peterson to Islam, then so be it. But hey, I enjoy his work and I think Hamza Yusuf acknowledged that as well. He's like, yeah, you're doing some bridge building as well. You know, it's very good, it's very unique because hey, Hamza Yusuf, he's, he's you know, very aware of the misconceptions people have about Islam and you know, being given platforms to speak to people who may not have ever heard about Islam through conversations with Jordan Peterson and whatnot, he looks at it as a benefit. So, hey, people like Jordan Peterson, even though they may not follow a particular religion, are also helping religions be shared and also helping to uncover what religions are actually about and removing the misconceptions. So I say he's doing a, a great work. And again, if that leads him to Islam, that leads him to Islam. So guys, really hope you learned something from this and uh, really hope that, yeah, this was eye-opening, informative, entertaining, educational, all of that. And yeah, let's continue. A lot of my work is doing this as well too. Let's continue to, yeah, look for the commonalities with religions, eliminate the fighting and the bickering. You know, are you gonna make your life really about fighting with people and insulting them or just embracing your religion truly living it out experiencing that peace that that understanding that knowledge that wisdom that you claim is in your religion regardless of what religion you follow live that out experience it and then share but share in love and at the same time i'm not saying be a pushover share with power but always remember that not everybody believes exactly the same as you and it doesn't mean that they need to be mistreated because they believe differently. So that's where I'm going to end this one. Thanks for hanging out with me in another video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.